What's up guys, Intellitech Studios here, and today we're going to be doing the full review of the Samsung Galaxy Note 9 in 2022. Now I know some of you may be thinking, hey, you're late to the party, why are you doing a review on this? Well, look, I know the S22 Ultra is out, which is basically the new Note, but here's the thing, the Galaxy Note 9 is the best value of any Note that you can get right now. You can get these for around $200, and I know because I just got this one for that price. I got this one on eBay, 128 gig model for $200. That is an amazing deal, and that makes this one of the best budget phones that you can consider in 2022 because it has a lot of the creature comforts that the new S22 Ultra doesn't have. You have an SD card slot, you have a headphone jack, you have MST, so you have proper contactless payments with the advantage that Samsung Pay has given us for the last several years. Now that's all gone on the S22 Ultra. And sure, you have a bigger screen and a slightly fancier S Pen, as well as the obvious generational improvements like a slightly faster processor and better camera, but the overall package is it that good of an upgrade, considering that the that, that phone is $1,200? Personally, I don't think so. And that's why I haven't bought an S22 Ultra, and have finally decided, after mulling it over for a long time, that I'm not buying and reviewing the S22 Ultra, as tempting as that sky blue color is. So, with that in mind, if you are wondering about the Galaxy Note 9, or just budget notes in general, what is it about this device that makes it such a good value and such a good choice even despite its age. Now, first off, this device isn't even all that old. This device came out in August of 2018, which is not that long ago. Sure, it's three coming up on four years, but if you think about it, a lot of people keep their phones for five, eight years. Now, sure, a lot of people in the tech community will pretend like people upgrade every single year or even every other year at the most, but that's you know, sure, if you're on a contract, then maybe that's how you do it. But for those of us who buy our phones outright, who don't like putting contracts on payment plans and worrying about credit and contracts and all that, we just want to buy our devices outright, that's a lot of money for the S22 Ultra. But the Note 9, at 200 bucks, maybe 300 if you want to buy one sealed in the box, old stock, that's a really good value proposition, especially considering all you get. So... First off, I've been using this device for, well, technically this one. This one I've been using for the past three years. I got my Note 9 in May of 2019, shortly after the Galaxy S10 came out. And it's been my daily driver ever since then. The only reason I replaced this one is because the battery has been eh, kind of crap after three years of use. It's had a few little weird software glitches, and obviously, as you can tell, I did drop it <laughs> and break it, which is not good. But... In response, I purchased this, the Cloud Silver Galaxy Note 9, which I did do a video on. And I have the Samsung silicone cover right here, although this isn't that great of a case. A much better case is the UAG Plasma. This looks really nice. Oops, <laughs> I just dropped it. Really nice on this phone. And I do have a screen protector on this, but I'm probably going to end up taking it off. But I'll leave it on for this video, at least I think. Unless it bothers me, in which case I'll rip it off. Look at that back. Isn't that pretty? So... Enough wasting time, let's talk about what the experience is like on the Note 9, because a lot of people are going to be wondering, yeah, sure, it's a lot cheaper, but it's obviously going to be a lot worse, right? This isn't worth it, is it? And let me answer, it is, and here's why, because you still have a lot of great things on the Note 9. First off, battery life, because that's something that a lot of people are going to talk about when it comes to secondhand phones, and that's a perfectly acceptable conversation to have. Because this phone is one you can't buy anymore. So the battery life is going to be the most important factor in determining whether or not you have a good experience. Because the fact is, new phones, ever since the Note 5, you don't have a removable battery. So if you want to replace the battery in the phone after it's worn down, you're going to have to open it up and change it yourself or take it to a shop and have them do it for you. And a lot of times the prices are pretty crazy. If you do it yourself, it's very cheap. But if you try to have a prof professional do it, you can have some problems. In terms of price so how has the battery life been on this phone well I like I said I have two of these and the experience of the battery life really does depend 
on where your unit comes from. So if your unit is one that someone has used since the phone came out in 2018 and you're buying it off someone who finally upgraded to the S22 Ultra, expect the battery to not hold up very well. Now the great thing is that the Note 9 when it first came out had amazing battery life. They advertise it as an all day battery, it's a 4000 milliamp hour battery, and the battery life was fantastic. And the good news is, is that on my new unit, the battery life is still fantastic. I can still get through a day, no problems with this phone. It's just as good as my Note 10 Plus that I'm recording with, and it's just still a great experience. Is it a little bit worn down from age? Of course it is, just like any other battery would be, because even a battery being stored for a long period of time is still going to you know, be a little bit deteriorated, but the difference is very minimal. Now, unfortunately, I thought I had AccuBattery set up. I don't, so I don't have the data right there, but the last time I checked this, because I did factory reset this, the last I checked, this was at about 80 to 90 percent capacity, which is still a really good amount of battery life, and again, I could still get through a full day. So it is still possible to get through an entire full day with the Note 9, and I have heard some people complain about the S22 Ultra having bad battery life as well. So it's not just an issue with older phones. So this will all depend on where you get your Note 9 from, but if you get a good one, or if you're willing to replace the battery, either yourself or have someone else do it, then the battery life is still great. Still getting five upwards of six hours of screen on time, depending on your usage. Now, of course, that's not the most objective figure in the world because if you have it on low brightness and you're doing something not as resource intensive, you could get six easily. And if you're very intensive playing games and all that, you could get three hours of screen on time. It really just depends on what you're doing. But for basic average uses, checking emails, watching YouTube videos, posting on Twitter, recording the occasional video or picture throughout the day, listening to music, it still lasts a full day with no problems. So, and that's, again, that's my unit. Obviously, your unit could potentially have some different experience there, but that's something to keep in mind. These are still capable of lasting all day, especially if you get one from a refurbished place, if you get one from Amazon Renewed or a refurbished seller on eBay that puts good batteries in them. As long as you buy it from a reputable seller, you're not going to have any problems with the battery and you will still get a full day out of this phone, no problems. And the good news is, even if yours has a little bit of issues with making it through the day, you do have USB Type-C, you do have fast charging, you don't have the newer 45 watt fast charging and the whatever crazy wattage is on the newer phones, but you do still have the classic fast charging that Galaxies have had since the Note 4 and Note 5, and sure, that may not sound super impressive, but getting a full charge in less than two hours on the fast charge is still really good, and in my experience it charges even faster than that. You're looking at about 1% every minute, and that is still really good. I really don't see any need to have it charge any faster than that, and it's not good for your battery anyways. You do have it, you do have it, the ability to charge via USB Type-C, so you have a perfectly modern standard. You have fast wireless charging, so if you want to use any sort of wireless charger, you can do that. Of course, this has been classic on notes for quite a few generations now, but it is there. And these are a lot of creature comforts that if you are shopping in the $200 price range for a brand new phone, you're not going to have this stuff. $200 phones aren't going to have fast charging, and they're not going to have wireless charging especially. So, not to mention, they're not going to have this level of build quality with the metal and glass. This has aluminum all over the sides. It's basically the same 7000 series aluminum that Samsung has had for a while. You've got the lovely chamfered edges, which has been kind of something new introduced on the Note 9 that... Some people kind of miss, but it is there. You can see the only blemish on my device is a little dent right there. That was not caused by me. That was when I bought it. So 200 bucks, I get what basically looks like a brand new phone, but just with one little dent. So keep that in mind. If there is going to be a dent on one of these phones and the person had a case on it, if there is going to be damage, it's going to be right here next to the S Pen because this, this is where most cases will often have a spot where the case doesn't quite cover this corner properly, so if it's dropped perfectly on that corner, it could push the case out of the way and dent the phone. So that is something to keep in mind, but that's just every note, that's every phone with a stylus, that part is going to be a weak point even with a case on it. But the good news is, as far as cases go, you have plenty of good options. The UAG, which is one of my favorite cases, this is a $40 case. You can get these brand new on eBay for $10. And this will give you a solid amount of protection. My dad has one of these with this case, uses it all the time in construction type environments, drops it all over the place. 
never broken his phone. So that is really good. And of course, with the silver, it looks really good. So as far as the colors, if you are concerned about how your device will look, there are plenty of colors. When this device first came out, there was only the blue and the purple, but now you have access to the black and the silver. And if you shop internationally, you can get a copper one as well. Although if you get the copper one that's international, you might not have all the right bands for T-Mobile and AT&T, and Verizon and Sprint are gonna be pretty much out of the question. So, but if you do shop within, within the states and within the Snapdragon variant of the Note 9, you have those four colors, silver, black, blue, and purple with the latter three being the most common. So the silver one is kind of harder to find, so be careful with that. But all the other three colors are very easy to find, and they're easy to find parts for too. So if you drop it and you break it, you can find parts to fix it. So as far as the glass, we do have Gorilla Glass 5 on the back and on the front. And I found that, that the Gorilla Glass 5 on this is built very differently than the Gorilla Glass 5 on the Galaxy Note 7, which is when which is where the glass debuted. So I oh wow. <laughs> I just wanted to take my Note 7 out of the case and it just cracked. That's not good. Thankfully the case and not the phone, but yeah, that's kinda weird. Sorry, I know this isn't about this phone, but I went to show you this and obviously that just cracked and you probably just heard that Okay, so both of these phones do have Gorilla Glass 5 But the Note 7 did have some issues when it first came out with the glass scratching really easily on certain units and being a little bit more brittle on certain units So there were some units where it was very durable and didn't scratch or crack very easily And there's some where they would break very easily the Note 9 does not have this problem while Gorilla Glass 5 is yes an older generation of glass it is still very durable and more importantly it's very consistent so as long as you're not using your phone without a case and getting a bunch of scratches and scuffs all over it which is what happened with my last note 9 which is why i'm not really mad at it for cracking because i use this without a case and there were scratches and scuffs all along the back especially down here and that presumably is what weakened the glass to the point to where one drop broke the back. So as long as you don't do that, as long as you're very careful with it, and or you put a case on it or a skin, you shouldn't have any problems with that. Now, for whatever reason, dbrand has discontinued the skins for a lot of their older phones, which is very frustrating to me because I wanted to get skins for all my old galaxies and my old phones as well, but they got rid of all those. So as of right now, the Note 9 is the oldest Samsung device you can get skins for. And if you are gonna get a skin, get the teardown, it looks awesome. And if you can't get that, then just get something nice that matches your color. Maybe go leather, give you the classic Note vibe. So if you're into skins, that is not a problem with the Note 9, at least for the time being. So as far as the scratch resistance, it still does great. As far as the shatter resistance, now, I do find this phone to be a little bit more fragile than its predecessor, the Note 8, but I don't think that's necessarily because of it being weaker or having worse build quality, more so just the fact that the much bigger battery means it weighs a lot more, which means if you do drop it, it's going to be a lot more force heading towards the ground and much more likely to crack it if you land on the front or on the back. So if you are worried about that, if you have butterfingers and you drop your phone a lot, definitely get a good case. But, you know, that goes with pretty much any phone. But, you know, that is a bit of a difference there because if you are shopping for a $200 phone that's $200 brand new, you might have trouble finding cases, like nice cases that you like that also fit the phone and that may tempt you to go caseless. On this phone, you don't have that problem. So the only thing is, is that the cases you will find for it are starting to get a little bit harder to find. As far as Spigen's lineup, a lot of the Spigen cases are gone. The only Spigen case I can find now is the Liquid Air. And I do not recommend that case at all because that's actually how I got an identical dent to this on my last note. In fact, I could probably show you that. And that was, that was yeah, you can see that dent right there. So that dent right there is as, as a result of the Speakin liquid air case. So I don't really recommend that case. This UAG has not had any problems though. So if you are concerned about getting a good quality case, there are still plenty of options out there if you want something protective for your Note 9. So, as far as the durability and everything, it's A1. No issues there. Again, as long as you're careful with your phone, don't have any problems, then you shouldn't have any problems. I said that weird, but you get what I mean. Okay, so now looking at the back, we do have our rear-mounted fingerprint sensor, which is a lot faster than the optical or the 
ultrasonic sensor on the Note 10 Plus. So the Note 10 Plus that I'm filming with, so I can't show that. This fingerprint sensor is a lot faster. It unlocks incredibly quickly. It's one of the quickest fingerprint sensors that I've ever used, and it's easy to feel out. And one nice thing of it compared to the Note 8 is that because it's not up in the corner, it's actually in the center, that means that whether you're a lefty or a righty, you have no problems unlocking your phone and you don't have you know, preferential treatment as far as where you're able to reach the fingerprint sensor. You can just touch it and it's very easy to get. You do want to be careful because sometimes if you put your finger close up, you can end up smudging your camera lens. So you want to make sure these camera lenses are wiped off so that way you don't have any issues there. But yeah, as we can see, fingerprint sensor unlocks really quickly, no issues. You can see I'm not even looking at it, I'm just feeling it. And it's very easy to find the square right in the center of the phone and unlock it. So that is one thing that's nice. I have noticed that it is a lot faster than some of the older notes. If you look at the Note 7, if I'm unlocking this with the fingerprint sensor, you can see it took it took a little bit. Now, to be fair, the Note 7 is probably a bit unfair to to you know to actually compare it to, considering there was no software updates for this. But it is something to keep in mind. So it's it's a little slow. Note 9 it does not have that problem. So if you're one of those people that's somehow still holding on to a Note 7, I don't know how you're holding on to it this long, although review on this will be coming soon. Note 9, just get it already. It is a definitely good option. Now if you're comparing this to something like the Note FE, I can't compare it to the Note 8 because my Note 8 is shattered, and I'll have to do a separate video on that. But let me clear out the notifications here. So if you are comparing this to the Note Fan Edition... Hey there, this will power force fans. Oh my god, why did it just open that? Okay, there we go. So we can see front mounted fingerprint sensor. Some people could prefer the front found the front mounted fingerprint sensor. So, you know, you could potentially prefer that, but of course this is much older and you're gonna have a hard time finding one of these. So note nine, great there. So fingerprint sensor is really good. One other thing that you have that you don't have on the S22 Ultra is the iris scanner. Now, the nice thing about the Note 9 is that you can combine both the face unlock, which this does have, and the iris scanner to use intelligence scan, and that works really well. So if I, let me clear my notifications real quick. Someone commented on Reddit. So if I look at this, like I can look at it and it immediately unlocks with my face. And if it misses my face, it'll use my irises. So if you're really concerned about security, you probably want to have it just activate the iris scanner because that will be more secure than the face unlock. But you can actually adjust the settings of the face unlock. Remember the Pixel 4 XL when it had issues where it would allow you to unlock it with your eyes shut? This has the option. In fact, by default, it's turned on to where it does not allow you to, to open it with your eyes closed. But if for whatever reason you want that feature, then you can turn that on. So it's very customizable. So no matter what way you want to log into your phone, you've got a million different options and they all work very well. I recommend just having the intelligence scan and the fingerprint sensor on. So no matter whether you're looking at your phone or picking it up from a table while it's face down where you want to put it right there and open it up, no matter what you want to do, it works great. And that's one thing that I've loved about this. I've never had any issues with unlocking my phone. I've always been able to unlock my phone very quickly. And of course, you can set up a pin, pattern, or password as a backup for one of these for when you first turn on your phone. I personally choose to set up a pin, so you have that option as well. So you've got a million different options for biometric authentication. Some people would argue two options. I wouldn't. I love having all of those features. So if you're worried about being able to get into your phone, that's not a problem. A lot of phones nowadays in the $200 price range will make you pick between face unlock or fingerprint sensor, and the iris scanner isn't even an option on any phones anymore, including Samsung's best. So having that iris scanner is really nice, it's very secure, and it's just really cool. So as far as unlocking, authentication, all that stuff, the Note 9 is still great in that regard. So. Now let's talk about the cameras, since we are looking at the cameras. So the cameras on this are pretty good. Now, I've been, this is, again, this has been in my daily driver, so a lot of the thumbnails that you've seen on my YouTube videos and all that, up until very recently since I got this, all of them have been taken with my Note 9. There's a couple exceptions. I did take a couple with my Pixel, so a couple of them I did take with my Pixel 3, but 
again, for the longest of time, Note 9 did all this. I ran my YouTube channel off my Note 9, and in some ways I still do. So, yeah, I mean, the Note 9 is so powerful that you can, in fact, run your business off of your phone. This has 128 gigs of storage and 6 gigabytes of RAM. The RAM management on this is a lot better than something like the Note 7, where you only have 4 gigs of RAM. A lot of the Pixels, up until very recently, also had 4 gigs of RAM. iPhones don't have a lot of RAM, although those do really good at RAM management. But this has a great amount of RAM. Whereas a lot of these $200 phones you're going to get, at least last I checked, those still have, you know, 64 gigs of storage and 4 gigs of RAM. They're like a 2016 flagship. And the Note 9 is still way ahead of those. So that is great. The cameras are still way ahead of those. Now, I would comment on the front-facing camera, but I never use the front-facing camera. So I'm not really the best person to judge the quality of the front-facing camera because I don't really take a lot of selfies. I find selfies to be just weird and uh, not my thing. So selfies, but if I do take a selfie real quick. There we go. So we can look at this, you know, picture of my face. Okay, there we go, deny. So there's a picture of my face, my perfectly ungroomed face with my lovely pineapple shirt. Like, you can zoom in, you know, you can see my very large nose and, you know, my glasses that are completely scuffed up that I need to replace. You can see all this lovely stuff. So, you know, if you're the kind of selfie person, now obviously... Usually my version of selfies is taking selfies with friends, although I don't really have friends, so I mostly just take selfies with my fiance. Obviously, I don't want to show those pictures for privacy reasons, but the quality has been great, and I haven't had any complaints. Now, sure, when my fiance takes a selfie of us following me taking a selfie with his iPhone 12, is the quality better? Yes, but I would expect it to be because it's two generations newer than this Note 9. This Note 9 would be equivalent to an iPhone XS or XS Max, so... As far as quality goes, no issues there. Now, oh, let's, I don't want to edit my face. My face is fine. So, as far as the rear camera, I do have a picture that I took uh, not to... Oh, it didn't back up my pictures. What? Okay, well, that's not good. For whatever reason, I backed up all of my pictures into my Samsung Cloud, and it didn't. it didn't restore them for some reason. That's kind of crappy. I was going to show you a very, very pretty night shot that I took with this, but it's not on here for whatever reason. I'm not sure why that is. Huh. Uh, that, I don't know, that might be some weird issue. Is there... Hmm. Give me one sec. Okay, so the weird thing is, is for whatever reason, it... I ended up backing up the photos on my Note 7, so I'll show you them on the screen on my Note 7, but these are pictures I took with the Note 9. In fact, these look really nice on the Note 7 because it matches. But I took this picture with the Note 9 not too long ago, and look at this. This is beautiful. This doesn't have any sort of... There's no there's no filters. There's, there's no anything on this. This was a picture I took with my Note 9, just point and shoot, literally in a Walmart parking lot. And this is the result. Look at the sky. It's gorgeous. Now, sure... You could argue that, you know, if you zoom in, it gets a bit, uh, kind of a bit blurry, but this is still gorgeous, and I see no problems with this picture, and I even took a couple pictures next to it, so we can see, again, more sky pictures, you see I kind of took one where I zoomed in a little bit, this would be a beautiful wallpaper, so the picture quality on the Note 9 is still amazing now the biggest downfall when you compare it to a newer note is not even the quality per se because that's excellent but you don't have any sort of wide angle lens when i compare it to this note 10 plus i mean look look what happens when i do this Ooh, look at that we got a wide angle lens here and it makes my hands look incredibly big look how big my hand is so on this Note 10 Plus, we do have a wide angle lens whereas on this Note 9 there is no such thing you only have this and this on the Note 9, although obviously they'd be slightly worse than this Note 10 Plus, but you get the point. So we have a main camera and a telephoto camera, but we don't have any sort of wide angle. So that is kind of a bummer. I kind of wish that Samsung had given us a wide angle on this instead of a telephoto, because I find the telephoto lens to be not as useful, because you can't forcibly zoom out of a picture, but you can zoom in even with just one camera. In fact, I'll demonstrate that here. This phone, Note 7, 
one camera. If I double tap, open up the camera, look what we can do. We can zoom in. We can zoom into eight times zoom. Not optical zoom, it's very fuzzy, admittedly, but we can do that, and it's, it's not a problem. Same story with the Pixel 3. Let's see if I grab my Pixel 3 and I unlock it. Double tap the power button. Boom. Again, same story. We have 2x just right there. No issues. And I can go all the way up to 7x. And that actually looks about the same as it does on the Note 7 in terms of its zoom abilities. So I don't see the use for a telephoto. I do think the telephoto does actually make a difference in the quality of zooming in, whereas on the Note 8, it didn't make any difference in my experience. On this, the telephoto actually does improve the zoom a little bit. And obviously on the newer phones with the huge, you know, telephoto lenses that stick out of the phone, yeah, obviously you're gonna be able to zoom in a crazy far amount. But as far as what you're actually gonna be doing day to day, I keep pointing at this. I'm not filming with this. This is still a satisfactory camera. I mean, both both of these phones are. Heck, for most people, even something like this is still a satisfactory camera, uh, as long as it doesn't blow up in your pocket. So, yeah, the Note 9's camera is still great. I still record with it. It supports 4K. You know, let me, oh, sorry. Let me open this up real quick. Go into the camera. We can see we have plenty of modes. One thing that's kind of annoying is that I don't like how you have to actually switch between photo and video. One thing I liked, now this is my other Note 9. Is this even on? Okay, it's not on. So this particular Note 9, I never updated from the original firmware. This is still running Android 8.1, and this is running the newest Android 10. So you can update your Note 9 to Android 10. It doesn't apply to the newer update strategy because Samsung is now giving you four years of updates on your phones. Unfortunately, the Note 9 was the cutoff. If you upgrade to the Note 10 Plus, I believe the cutoff is also there, but I believe if you get the 20 Ultra, I believe you get more updates, but don't quote me on that. But still, Android 10 for today's purposes is still perfectly usable. Even Android 8.1 is still very usable and doesn't really have any problems. So. The only reason why I got this one as far as, or I should say the only reason why I don't update my phones whenever I get them is because Samsung doesn't allow you to downgrade anymore because they update the binaries. So if I updated this to the Android 10, I couldn't roll it back to 8.1 and I'd want it to be able to be on that just for archival purposes. And whenever I do fix this, I do want to do a speed test of both of these to see how well they age after time. Although, based on my experience using them back to back, the Android 10 update actually did not slow this down. In fact, in some ways it actually optimized and made it run a little bit quicker, which in my experience is very rare for software updates. So, the update experience has been great. We've heard a lot of stories about updates bricking people's phones. Uh, I say that, literally, in this case. But, in, you know, in the cases of, like, slowing down phones and all that, the Note 9 does not suffer from that problem, even on the base 128-gig model with, with 6 gigs of RAM. This still holds a lot of apps and memory and has no problems. Now, if you want to spend a couple extra dollars and get the 512-gig version with 8 gigs of RAM, that'll future-proof you even a little bit more. Now... It's possible that by the time you actually reap those benefits that Android 10 would be kind of out of date, but I doubt that. I hear a lot of people say that, and I, given how much RAM is going up on a lot of these new phones, I feel like that these apps are going to get a lot more resource intensive as a way of kind of forcing people to upgrade from their lower RAM phones. Because otherwise, every phone has pretty much done the same thing for the last few years now, and for a lot of people there isn't an incentive to upgrade. So I guarantee you that a lot of these companies are going to be making their apps more resource intensive as a way of moving more units and getting more phones into people's hands with more RAM so that way they have a tolerable experience. So the Note 9, even at the base model, I feel is well future proof for that with the 6 gigs of RAM. And again, if you get the 8 gig of RAM and 512 gig variant, you'll have storage and RAM for days. And no matter which variant you get, you do have an SD card slot. Right here, this is a SIM and SD card slot, so you don't have any problems with expanding the memory. You can put at least a 512 gig card in here. I guess you could theory put as small of a card as you want, but you know, no point in putting an 8 gig card in here. But if you want to put a terabyte card in here and get a terabyte and a half of storage, you can do that. Now, it's technically only approved for a 512 gig card, but usually devices that can hold that much storage can usually hold more than that. It's just not guaranteed to because that's not what they tested it for at the time. But 
I would bet, I would bet pretty handily that you can put a one terabyte card in this. And if you have the 512 gig version on top of that, that's a terabyte and a half of storage in your phone. There is nothing you can do on your phone that will run out of that space in a reasonable amount of time. Okay, I said that and I'm sure someone is going to challenge me to it and say that they managed to blow through that amount of storage in a month. We'll see. <laughs> Anyways, so camera on this Note 9 is great. Biometrics is great. Build quality is great. Performance is great. So what else is there to talk about? Well, this is a note after all. So let's talk about the advanced features, including the S Pen. So one thing that's nice about the S Pen, you pop it out. Of course, this is the cloud silver. You have your screen off memo with the ability to pin it to the always on display. That was a feature that was introduced on the Note 7, and that's an amazing feature. With the Note 8, they introduced the ability for you to write up to 100 pages of off-screen notes. That is still here. So the ability for this to be used as a notepad with the screen mostly off has been excellent. So if we pull out the pen and activate the screen off memo, we can see that we actually, this is kind of hard to see. I might have to turn down my brightness. I don't know why it does not want to look at this, but we can see that. So there is a way right up here where we can change the colors. I don't know why this is not wanting to focus. But we can see there is a few different colors. Now, one weird glitch that I found is that on this, the top color is supposed to be it, well, it's either supposed to be just a dark blue or it's supposed to be the signature color of the S Pen. And I've noticed that it kind of switches once in a while. So we have white, yellow, red, and green. It's kind of hard to see. But we do have those colors, and the top color is supposed to be blue, but sometimes it turns into the signature color, which in the case of the silver one is a light blue. So sometimes it'll draw in light blue, and sometimes it'll switch over dark blue, which is really bizarre. So that's one weird little glitch that I found, is that sometimes this top color will be the signature color, and sometimes it'll just be blue. So, but you do have plenty of options to color in. Now, dark blue is usually my favorite, so it's weird how that's gone. But the signature color on this silver one's nice, too. So the way the signature color works is it, if you have the silver one, it's a light blue. If you have the blue, it's yellow. I'll show that in a sec. If you have purple, it's purple, and then I'm not sure what the black and copper ones are. We can see if I grab my blue one and pull out the yellow S Pen, you can see this. It, so what I did on this one is I actually downgraded the Samsung Notes app. So this is this is just the signature color because it's the old firmware and the old Samsung Notes. So this is just the yellow. Now the reason I downgraded this is because for whatever reason, if your Note 9 is still running Android 8.1 and you update Samsung Notes, it removes the ability for you to pin to the always-on display, which is something I tore my hair out trying to figure out. And I found out that's just a weird thing that breaks when Samsung Notes updates itself. So if you if you don't update your phone's firmware and it updates, you lose that functionality. So you either have to update your phone's firmware or downgrade your Samsung Notes to get this back. But if you're on the newest firmware, which most people are, it's not going to be an issue to begin with. So, but that's just something to keep in mind. I want to mention that because that is something that I had problems with because, well, I didn't know that that was a firmware issue. But if you have an updated phone, then it's not going to cause you any problems. So the S Pen experience on the Note 9... I think my cats are play fighting. So the S Pen experience on the Galaxy Note 9 is still excellent and no issues with that whatsoever. Of course, if you pull the S Pen out, you do have the options for all of this great stuff, creating notes, viewing notes, smart select, so you can take screenshots. I use that all the time. Screen write I use all the time. Live message is really cute if you want to send cute messages to somebody. I actually need to start using this again. AR Doodle, which I honestly never used. The Translate. Glance, Magnify, which isn't here. Ma Glance and Magnify were introduced with the Note 7. Those ones I don't use too much anymore. And of course, Coloring, which I always have on here because it's very nice. Uh, it uses Pen Up, so you can use Pen Up and use that to do some doodling. So, for example, if I want to start coloring this pool, I can start coloring this pool. So I can... And it's great. <laughs> great coloring skills, as you can see. So that's just something that's kind of cute that you can do. 
And that's actually something that a lot of people find very good because I know a lot of people where if they have anxiety or if they have a lot of um, maybe like ADHD or some issues with focusing, I do notice that a lot of people, if they're stressed, they like having the S Pen because simply doing some coloring will actually kind of calm you down a little bit because it's something that you can focus on, something creative, kind of get your brain juices flowing. And I found... <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, I'm going to pause this video real quick, and I'm going to check up and make sure that my cats don't kill each other. I'll be right back. Apologies for the interruption. Anyways, so I found that a lot of people do seem to really enjoy the coloring on the S Pen. It's not something that I use too often, but it is something where if I have a friend and they're having some, you know, they're freaking out or something, I want to try to calm them down. I do find often that handing them my phone and letting them do the coloring does calm them down a lot. So, no. I don't really run into that situation much anymore because I don't have friends, but whenever I did, that was something that came in handy quite a lot. So definitely a very nice feature, and if you have kids or something like that who enjoy coloring, or even adults who enjoy coloring, then it's a nice little feature to have, a good way to de-stress. So the pen can not only be fun, it can also be productive. Whenever I would use the pen, whenever I would edit videos on my Note 9, I would often use the pen to scrub through the timeline as well, as well as draw on thumbnails, although now I just type. But you can do either, and that's one thing that's really cool about the S Pen as well. So the S Pen is just one of the... Oh, hi, Boots. So the S Pen is just one of those tools that I find really nice. Hi, Boots. You okay? Okay. So I find the S Pen is definitely one of those things that is very, very nice to have, and it kind of sucks whenever you don't have it. Can I live without the S Pen? Sure. But just little things, because I'm very forgetful, so the ability to just take out the pen and write something down. Of course, the classic example is a grocery list. So if I want to say, buy eggs, that's, that's a weird-looking eggs, and then I just want to pin that to the always-on display, I can do that. And then bam, it's right there on the always-on display. And then, of course, I can very easily discard it or hide it. And the always-on display... Jeez. And the always-on display in of itself is also very useful. You can tell just from me using this that the phone has gotten completely covered in fingerprints. So that is kind of one of the things that happens with the glass-backed phone. So you got to constantly be wiping it down or just get a scanner case, and that covers that up, no problems. You can see the iris scanner shining into the camera. So yeah, one other thing is Samsung Pay. Now, Samsung Pay has been on Samsung phones since the S6 and Note 5, but the thing I love about Samsung Pay on the Note 9 is it still has MST. Now, if you don't know what MST is, is that MST is essentially the feature where if you have your card added to Samsung Pay, and you're not at a terminal with NFC, if you're at an older Pay terminal, just an older basic card reader, the... Samsung Pay will use the MST technology in the older notes. I don't know why my cat's being a crackhead right now. <laughs> it is early in the morning, so that usually happens. Samsung Pay will actually use the MST technology in order to basically mimic a traditional card swipe. So even though you just have your card loaded up in Samsung Pay, when you put your phone next to the card reader, it'll basically trick the card reader into thinking that you swiped your actual card which it doesn't always work, but it works very frequently. I would say depending on the card reader, it works maybe 90% of the time, assuming that the company didn't go out of their way to be dicks and turn it off like my local Walmart. So if you're in most situations, I can often leave my wallet at home and use this to pay. And now that Samsung's removed that feature, I can't do that anymore if I upgrade to the S22 Ultra, which is ridiculous because it's not like in that time that the stores that I go to have all upgraded their card readers. Most of these, most places don't upgrade their card readers unless they break. If you're in a huge city where everything is NFC, then sure, but everywhere else, you're kind of you're you're kind of stuck. Now the good news is is that I believe, uh, don't quote me on this, but those who have an S22 Ultra, if you have an older watch like a Gear S2 or a Gear uh, old school Galaxy watch. I'd be curious to to see if that would allow you to then just do it through the watch instead of through the phone and use MST. But I'm not sure about that. And obviously, most people don't want to have to buy a watch to get the same functionality they had previously on their phones. So, if you have a Note 9 and you use MST all the time, you might not want to upgrade, at least not to the S22 Ultra, because I believe the Note 20 Ultra is the last phone to have MST. 
but don't quote me on that. I could have the phone wrong, but the Note 9 definitely has it. So that is another thing. No other phone in a $200 price range is going to have MST, especially since all the phones in the $1,000 price range no longer have MST. So that's another thing that makes the Note 9 incredibly versatile to where you can use this to pay at many different places and even if they don't have Google Pay or non-MST Samsung Pay. So that is an amazing feature that it really sucks that they, they got rid of that. I didn't even realize that was a thing they were ever going to do because that was the selling point of Samsung Pay. But for whatever reason, Samsung feels the need to remove features that they once advertised that once made people pick their phones and now pretend like it never happened. And that wouldn't be the first time because you know what this phone comes with when you buy a brand new headphone jack with headphones in the box comes with a charge brick comes with the cable comes with all the books everything it even includes the extra s pen tips that you can use to replace the tip on the s pen if the tip gets worn down after excessive use all the new notes in the s22 ultra don't have any of that stuff anymore which is really irritating because what do we actually gain in return samsung i don't really see what we gain in return Sure, the battery on the S22 Ultra is a thousand milliamps better, bigger than this, but is it actually better? I've heard a lot of people give mixed results. Some people say it's way better, and some people say it's way worse than their old phones. So, that's not good. So yeah, if you're gonna, in my opinion, if you're gonna gamble on something like that, gamble on the thing that's gonna at least save you money in the process, versus the brand new phone that's gonna be potentially giving you problems right out of the box after you just paid a good amount of money for it, even with a trade-in. So, sure, Samsung does the trade-in thing now, which, I mean, they kind of started that with a certain device, but it's just annoying that you don't have any of the features on the new Note that you have on this. So if you have this phone, which a lot of people have this phone, and they're giving up because, oh no, my battery sucks, or oh no, I broke it, and I don't want to just go out and buy another one, I want something new. But then they also don't want, you know, they basically want to buy a brand new Note 9, which up until very recently you could buy these direct from Samsung, but Samsung just stopped doing that, which was annoying because I was planning on buying one, but they didn't. But in, in, in a way, i kind of glad I got this because... Again, the at the time, the Samsung renewed one was 500 This was 200 and the only difference is one little, de one little dent. So, I'm still kind of glad I went that route. So, yeah. I mean, is there anything else to talk about? The screen is still great. I don't think that really needs to be said. It's a Samsung display on a flagship. It's quad HD. Sure, it's only, it's only 60 hertz. You don't have 120 hertz and 90 hertz and all these fancy super high refresh rates but in my opinion those are kind of jarring anyways because if you don't have a high refresh rate tv and computer monitor and laptop and all that it's very jarring switching back between the two and so if i had an s22 ultra or a note 20 ultra i'm pretty sure i would just turn that off anyways especially because on the note 20 ultra you can't have 1440p quad hd and the high refresh rate so in my opinion, I'm going to choose the sharpness anyways because this is on QHD and the screen is gorgeous. It is incredibly sharp. It looks great. The brightness still is easily getting you through, you know, the few moments that you would use your phone in direct sunlight and it has no issues with anything regarding the display. There's literally nothing wrong with this display. Nothing at all. The display is perfect. Now, my particular display doesn't have any burn-in. I've noticed that the Note 9 is vastly improved in its resistance to burn-in compared to the Note 8. The Note 8, it is impossible to use a Note 8 nowadays without it getting massive screen burn. Literally, this Note 9 that I've had for three years, the only thing that's burned in on the screen are things that are burned in from usage. So the only thing that's burned into this screen, if I put, put it on a white background, you can see... The only thing that's burned into the screen is the record button and the Indeed logo from when I was looking for jobs three years ago. So, you know, the burn-in on the, these Note 9s aren't a problem in my experience. Now, as long as you don't get one that was heavily used in abuse, you shouldn't have any problems with burn-in either. Because that is one thing that you should always look out for when buying second-hand phones with AMOLED displays or just anything that's AMOLED. In my experience, the Note 9 is very resistant to burn-in. So if I if I put this on a white wallpaper, which I don't 
I don't think I have a white image in my phone, but there's no burn-in on this display. It looks just beautiful. There's no problems with it whatsoever. So in my experience, the Note 9 is an excellent choice if you want something that's still a great screen and you don't want to worry too much about burn-in. Now, it's, again, it's still possible, so be careful where you shop, but that shouldn't be a problem. So display, still great on this Quad HD, still 60 hertz, but that's still just fine. It's still very snappy. Overall, the phone is absolutely super snappy and no problems. Now, one thing is that you do have the option in Android 10 to switch this to gestures. Personally, I don't recommend it because I find the gestures get in the way of using Samsung Pay. So for me personally, I would turn the buttons back on, but that is something that you do have the option to. You can have modern gesture navigation on the Note 9 if you so choose. And sure, the bezels are a bit bigger and there's no cutout, no hole punch. Yeah, who cares? I don't, nobody cares about that. I don't care about that. In fact, I like the way the Note 9 looks. It's more symmetrical. It looks great. And while in some ways I do like having the physical home button, the nice thing about it having no home button is that these home buttons on these old Samsung phones are made out of plastic. So these, after extended periods of use, would get scratched. The only reason this one isn't scratched is because I replaced this display. So this phone is basically brand new. But these home buttons would get scratched up and, and just look really bad after a while. But since this doesn't have that, there's no problems. Now, if you do put a screen protector on, screen protectors are still kind of annoying on, on these curved phones. So be sure to turn on the touch sensitivity in the settings if you do put on one of these. But generally, I recommend against these because these displays are scratch resistant enough. And, you know, it just kind of gets in the way. I only put this on because I had it laying around and I might take it off. I'm, t I'm trying to get myself to leave it on there, but it just looks awful. But again, that's obviously up to you. So, as far as the buttons go, we do have a Bixby button, but does that bother me? Not really. I do prefer on the older Samsung phones where the volume rocker was two separate volume buttons, because this is a lot clickier, but the rocker on this is still just fine, and I didn't really have that many problems with the Bixby button. And, of course, you can use BX Actions or something like that to remap it to something else if you so choose. I personally just leave it on. I don't think I even have it on right now because I did just set this up. It's probably going to ask me to update Bixby, I imagine. Yeah. So Bixby does work pretty well. I have used it for some things, but I don't really see any reason to use it over Google now. With one exception. I, I know on my old Note 9, one thing that I used to do all the time is the YouTube app will, would lock up and not allow me to navigate with the screen. So then I would hold the Bixby button and force close YouTube. In fact, I might be able to demonstrate that right now. So if I open up YouTube and now it usually doesn't do it anymore, at least I don't think, but you know, let's just say that it, let's just say it's locked up right now and I'm swiping when I can't do anything. I can just do this, close YouTube. YouTube has closed. And there we go. YouTube is closed. So whenever I had that problem on this phone, that was very easy to fix it. It still got kind of annoying, but on this one that's updated on the updated software, I haven't had that problem at all. This thing has been absolutely stable, rock solid. My old Note 9 also used to crash all the time, and again, it still does, where if I'm using it, it'll just randomly restart in the middle of doing something. So again, I don't know if that's a hardware defect or if that's just the software, but if your Note 9 is still on Android 8.1 and you're having crashes, you might want to update or if you don't want to update because you want to leave it, then you might just want to grab another one and have that be the one you use. Since again, these are getting really cheap now, you can have multiples if you so choose and if you just really like the phone that much, which in my case, I do. And I will do a video at some point on restoring my Blue Note 9 with a new battery, new back, and new screen, making it look beautiful again. So we will see how that goes. And one other thing is the Bluetooth functionality, something that, that was a big feature on the Note 9 Back whenever I had a 9 to 5 job, the Bluetooth S Pen was really cool because I could prop this up in a phone case and I could pull out the S Pen and if I was watching a YouTube video, let's say, let's say if I open something up real quick and here we go, some, let me turn, turn the volume down. So let's say you're watching a video and you can also stretch it to full screen mode or have it the original, whichever one, I usually do in a full screen mode. So if you're watching a video, and let's say you know, you're know you watching a video on your lunch break, 
what I would always do is I would have the phone propped up against my water bottle and then I'd be eating and then you know as I you know say if someone wanted to talk to me I take out an earbud and I push the button on the pen and it would pause it now in this case it's it's telling me the tutorial but I wanted to pause there we go so it would pause it and then I could press it again and play now, of course, since it is Bluetooth low energy, it does lag a little bit, but it gets the job done. So if you're trying to specifically pause this at an exact point in the video, it's not going to be great for that. But just simply pausing and playing, it works good. Now you can also do like some double tap and that scrolls over to the next video. Double tap, scrolls over to the next video. Double tap on the pen, scroll over to the next video. And you get a lot of stuff like that. So the remote feature is really nice now generally speaking the pen charges very quickly whenever the pen or whenever the little capacitor in here dies you can pop it back in the phone and it charges up in just a minute i've never killed this so I, even on my lunch breaks you know t tapping and tapping and tapping and tapping and tapping i never actually killed this but then again at the time whenever i was working a nine to five my lunch breaks were usually like 10 minutes so it's not like there was much of a you know much of an opportunity for it to die to begin with so you know some people complain oh no you have to charge it but you know it is what it is i haven't had any problems with that and i find that feature to be really really cool and it is definitely something that i miss whenever i do switch to an older note for testing so yeah i think Oh yeah, and the speakers. Since we are talking about the media experience, this does have dual speakers, finally. First note to have dual speakers. And the speakers sound better than any newer note that I've tried, at least. My Note 10 Plus, they sound pretty much on par. Because the Note 9, it's, it still sounds just as good as the Note 10 Plus, if for no other reason the fact that on the Note 10 Plus, the whenever you have the volume up even the slightest bit, you know, as far as, not necessarily all the way up, but if you have it the slightest bit loud, the housing will kind of vibrate a little bit, whereas on the Note 9, it doesn't have that problem at all. It is, it doesn't have any problems with vibration or causing the, the housing to rattle or anything. It just sounds really good and really clear. So, it's not necessarily saying that the speakers are like that much better than the Note 10 Plus or vice versa, but there is an advantage to the way the Note 9 is. You have a more direct grill on the front and on the bottom, and they both sound great. So, that is also really good as well. That's something that Samsung finally addressed as far as people complaining about them, saying, why don't this have stereo speakers? Why is it just down here? There's certainly an earpiece right here. Use it. Samsung did, and I appreciate that. So the media experience on this is still really good. Now, sure, the newer notes might have slightly larger screens that are be more bezel-less and all that, but does that really matter in the grand scheme of things? No, it doesn't. Because at the end of the day, this is still a good screen. This is still a good experience. This is still comfortable to hold in the hands. The bezels are actually a bit wider on the edges, which means you're less likely to have accidental touches on the sides, which I love. That used to be a problem with a lot of the edge phones, like the S7 Edge. If I take my S7 Edge right here, this was a problem with this phone. If you were holding it like this and trying to do something, your palm would rub up on the edge of the screen and make it do all sorts of crazy stuff. Now, the Note 7 is a lot better at that, but it still, it still does it once in a while. It's not enough to really hurt it or consider it a negative. And the Note 7 is, in my opinion, still the more comfortable device to hold. It just feels great in the hands. This, in my opinion, is a little bit too big and a little bit too square. But of course, Samsung decided to take that, you know, and just make it even worse on the Note 10 because the Note 10 is even more of a square. And the 22 Ultra does feel a lot better, but it's still, it's still a square and it's still not comfortable to hold. The edges still dig into my hands. On the Note 9, it's not nearly as bad. It still can cause a little bit of hand fatigue after a while, but, you know, it's not a big deal. And considering the extra upgrades that you get in return, especially because the rounded corners are a lot nicer on the Note 9. On the Note 8, I found these, these curved a little bit too much and would sometimes cut off content. On the Note 9, that's not a problem. So overall, the experience with the Note 9 is great in 2022. You get a lot of phone for your money. And for my $200, I can't recommend a better phone for the price. The value proposition of buying this phone in 2022 
is second to none, and there is no reason not to consider it, unless you're just swimming in cash and have to have the latest thing for status. So, anyways, this is Intelltech Studio signing out with my review of the Samsung Galaxy Note 9 in 2022. This is still a beast of a phone. I still love it. I am strongly considering still using it because my Note 10 Plus is on AT&T, so I can't use it on Mint. So, right now, my SIM is in the Note 7 for testing purposes in preparation for the review on this. But once this is done, my SIM is going back in my Note 9 unless something changes. So anyways, that is pretty much it. If you have any questions, if there's anything that I missed and forgot to talk about that you're curious about, please drop that question in the comments below, and I'll be happy to answer it. If you like this video, be sure to like it and subscribe. And if you really like this video and found it helpful, please be sure to share it because I want to start getting into doing more phone reviews again, just like old times. Don't worry, I'm still doing vacuum content. I can do both. So anyways, this is Inteltech Studio signing out. I'll see you guys in the next video, and I hope you all have a good one. Peace. I will link a Note 9 from a reputable seller. If I can find the seller that I bought this from, I'll link their listing in the description because they had multiple because I had a great experience with buying this and I have no problems. So definitely good there. But yeah, still an excellent phone. I will also link, I'll try to find a link to a good case as well and all of that jazz. So again, oh, also one other thing I forgot to mention is that if you're the kind of person, like, if, if you buy one of these phones unlocked, because there's two different, there, there's actually three different variants of this, and they all have the SMN90U model number. So, if you buy the carrier version of one of these phones, it then depending on the carrier, it'll be locked to it. I don't know about Sprint, but I know if you have AT&T, and if you have T-Mobile, it's by default locked to those carriers. If you have a Verizon one, it's unlocked out of the box. So if you have T-Mobile or AT&T, you're going to have to actually unlock those phones with an unlock code. The Verizon ones you can use on any carrier out of the box. So if you can't find one, that's the U1 model number, because the U1 model number is the version that's factory unlocked and has no bloatware. And then there's, I believe there's another version of this where... Actually, no, I, I take that back. So there's two versions. So there's one with the U model number and the one with the U1 model number. The U is the carrier version. Now, if you have a Verizon one or if you unlock your AT&T or T-Mobile one, then it'll be unlocked. But it'll still have the carrier bloatware for whatever SIM card you put in the phone. So if you put in a SIM card, it, when I put in my Mint Mobile SIM card, it switched it over to T-Mobile and installed the T-Mobile bloatware because that was the closest carrier. If you get the U1 firmware, then that'll be the version where there is no carrier bloatware, there's no carrier branding on the boot up screen, and if you're the kind of person that wants the cleanest experience, you don't want any carrier bloat, get the U1 version. Now the good news is, is that as long as yours isn't SIM locked, meaning if you have an AT&T or T-Mobile one that's been unlocked, or if you have a Verizon one that wasn't locked to begin with, you can actually install the U1 firmware on the phone and have it be unlocked without the bloatware that way. That's actually what I did with this with this phone. So this phone, even though this was an SMN90U model number, I actually installed the U1 firmware on it, and now there's no bloatware, there's no boot up screen, it's completely fresh. But if you do that while the phone is locked to either AT&T or T-Mobile, don't do that thinking you can be slick and bypass the, the SIM lock. If you put a SIM in, even after doing that, it will still ask for the unlock code. It just won't be branded, but it'll still ask for the unlock code. So be careful with that, and make sure that you get the phone that you paid for, and make sure that, just try to get it unlocked no matter what. I see no reason to buy one, unless you are unless you get one for a better deal that's locked to the carrier that you have. Also, one other thing to keep in mind that is with any of these phones, is that if you have an MVMO, a mobile virtual network operator, of the equivalent carrier of this. So for example, in my case, I have Mint Mobile, which runs on the T-Mobile network, which means even if you buy a Note 9 that's blacklisted under T-Mobile and won't activate on a T-Mobile network, you should, keyword should, it's not a guarantee, you should be able to pop your SIM in and have it work as long as, as it's 
a company that runs on T-Mobile, but isn't actual postpaid or prepaid T-Mobile itself, if that makes any sense. So for example, if you have an AT&T phone that's blacklisted and locked to AT&T, it may not work on AT&T due to being blacklisted, and it may not work on Verizon or T-Mobile as a result of being locked, but you could still use it on a mobile virtual network operator that runs on AT&T. For example, Cricket or Straight Talk. So if, if you pay attention to that and you're willing to take a risk, you could potentially get a really good deal on one of these, even if it has some restrictions to the device. As long as you can shop smartly and try to get one that won't cause you any problems and get one with a good return policy so that way if it doesn't work you can get your money back, you could potentially snag a really good deal on one of these from someone who might not have paid it off properly. And their loss could be your gain. So that is something that's always really sketchy, but you could do that. If you don't want to deal with any of that, just get an unlocked one. You can find them all over the place. So anyways, that is pretty much that. And the, and the reason why I say that is because this Note 9 that I use for the longest of time on both Verizon, Cricket, and Mint Mobile, which is basically the equivalent of Verizon, T-Mobile, and AT&T. I said that in the wrong order, but you know what I mean. This actually was one that I purchased that was blacklisted under U.S. Cellular. So, would not activate on a U.S. Cellular network and is a US, was a U.S. Cellular branded phone. But because U.S. Cellular, in the case of the Note 9, doesn't SIM lock their phones, I was able to buy this, pop my Verizon SIM in at the time, and use it with no problems. And at the time, I also installed the unlocked firmware, the U1 firmware that I previously mentioned, and no longer had any U.S. Cellular branding, and when I popped my SIM in, it just worked without any APN settings. So that's something that is really cool that you can still do if you are smart about the way that you buy your devices. If you're not tech savvy, you don't understand anything of what I just said, then don't worry about it. Just get an unlocked phone. So, but I still wanted to mention that in case you are a bit savvy and want to potentially try to find a really good deal on a device that isn't completely, you know, versatile, but might still work in your use case. So anyways, this was Intellitech Studio signing out with my full review of the Galaxy Note 9. This gets the Intellitech seal of approval for sure in terms of phones and mobile devices, especially in 2022, because this phone has aged like a fine wine. Now, I don't want this to seem like an ad. Obviously, it's not an ad because this phone's old. You can't buy it anymore from Samsung, but I just really love this thing, and I wish more people knew about it, and I wish more people weren't constantly stuck in the mindset of the only relevant device is the one that has been most recently released because this is still an amazing phone. If you still have one of these, don't feel bad. If you have someone that has the newer phone and don't feel like you need to be jealous of that, you still got a beast of a device, and especially if you bought it recently, you saved a good chunk of change on it, and you're being smart. So that's really cool. And I, I really am considering, you know, completely keeping this and either just using my Note 10 Plus for a camera or if I'm able to somehow unlock my Note 10 Plus, then I might switch to that just because I already have it. But if I don't do that, I'll be staying on the Note 9 for the foreseeable future and continuing to make videos about this phone because it has been the backbone of my channel for the last three years and I wanted to give it its praises for doing that job so well. Anyway, guys, this is Intelltech Studio signing out. I'll see you on the next video, and I hope you all have a good one. Peace. Also, let me know what devices you want to see reviewed next as far as cell phones. Now, obviously, I have a few in front of me, so if there is a few that you might want to see, like the S7 Edge, like the Note 7, like the Pixel 3, and I have quite a few others than this. These aren't the only phones I have. I have the S6 Edge Plus. I have the Motorola Droid Turbo. I have the iPhone 4S, and that wouldn't be very, that wouldn't make a good video. But th there's a lot of phones that I have. So if, if there's something that you want to see, I will do a video on my entire phone collection. So if you see something you want me to review in that video, then you can hopefully comment on that as well. Anyways, again, Intel Tech Studio signing out. Hi, Rika. Aw, hi, baby. What you doing? Hi. Hello. Oh. Hi, baby. 
Hi, baby. Rika, do you like the Note 9? I think that's a yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs>